Specify location, the size of the uh, hard disk, and go next, and then finish. And finish here, and it created the virtual machine. So now we have settings also for that virtual machine available. And go in here, and then you can change here uh, what version of uh, Linux or what operating system you want to use. If you go here on events, you can uh, define a snapshot folder, which is a really cool functionality if you're a um, little bit um, afraid of applying updates because you, in your experience of maybe on Windows or something, that updates uh, mess up your system or blue screen or whatever, you can create a uh, snapshot. Do your updates. If you don't like what what, what it has done to you, just um, delete the snapshot, and your operating system is way back to that point right before you install the update. So no damage has been done. So this is a really cool uh, feature. Then uh, you can add some description here. Go in here to the system settings. You can adjust the RAM. You can make uh, or can adjust the boot order. Yeah, I will leave it by default. Then you can uh, enable here power management stuff and uh, extended features. Uh, we'll do play around a little bit with that. Yeah, on every system that works out a little bit differently. Go over here to the pr processor. If you have a processor that makes use of uh, a PAE or NX functionality, you can enable that. It gives you more performance. Acceleration. If you have a VT chip, um, CPU or AMD V CPU enable that feature and then go over to the display you can adjust here how much video RAM you want to make available for your video card um, how many monitors you want to make available if you want to enable 3D acceleration or 2D acceleration you can enable or disable that here um, remote desktop you can um, set up, um, if I'm not mistaken, a RDP or a, a VNC session here if you can, if you want to remote into that machine like you're uh, using a physical machine then you can enable that one here. Storage, you can um, define here your um, IE controller, SATA controller, you know, like you know, SATA for the hard disk, it uses uh, a VDI we created and emulates a SATA controller and CD-ROM is emulated through an uh, ID controller and you can change the type here but the default is good. Go here, audio, if you want to make audio available you can enable that here and adjust it to your uh, audio system use on your, your system on Ubuntu I recommend using the Pulse Audio server and then here you can emulate what kind of sound card you want to use and like I said uh, default is fine go on to network and here um, you can enable the, the network adapter and you can enable or set up what kind of network emulation you want to run right now by default it's set to NAT that means the virtual network from the physical network it's totally different subnet so it's NATing like it's the same with your internet connection and your connection at home. Yeah, you have a private IP address internally, which is 192.168 something, and uh, uh, the internet has a public available IP address scheme here, so it's basically the same what it does. And you can ch change that here to um, a bridge adapter to an internal network or a host only adapter. Host only adapter is just local host, no network connectivity available. And then you can also set up some, some advanced features here like what kind of network card and the MAC address and if the cables connect or not, but all the defaults usually are fine. Go over here to serial ports, you can enable serial port emulation, so if you have something hooked up on your host on a serial port, you can enable or disable it here. 
uh, same with USB we can create filters here which USB devices get filtered through the virtual machine and which ones are not and you even can uh, create a shared folder so you have a network connection between your host and your guest operating system so you can exchange files you know uh, swap them back and forth whatever you want to do so click OK here all the defaults are fine oh I forgot one thing uh, we probably want to tell them um, what kind of oh, that we want to boot from a CD so um, I think there are two different ways you can do it we can set it up here in the settings to storage and then we can basically tell me use the host drive right pass through which I would recommend pass through and then say OK and then we can go ahead and start that virtual machine let's move that over here uh, here's some information if you don't want to see that anymore just check bar uh, mark the checkbox here click OK same here OK and then your virtual machine start up and it's booting from your CD yeah, so that's about it just use your uh, uh, installation CD install that program and then it's really important when you're done you gotta go in and install the guest editions guest editions um, will increase a little bit more responsiveness and uh, seamless um, um, how can I say it? you can move your mouse from your virtual machine over to your uh, host uh, it will work seamlessly you don't have to um, click into the window to change the focus into the virtual machine so guest edition will do that you have a better a responsiveness with the mouse with the keyboard you have a better uh, graphic output and uh, well all those uh, guest editions will take care of that so I recommend when you install Windows or Linux as a guest install always those guest editions all right um, I'll say thank you for watching this introductory video for or about virtual box and I hope you like it and if you have any questions or suggestions please send me an email or post something on my youtube channel or on my website www.ubuntuviewcast.com and don't forget to subscribe see you next time thank you